with beer. Hello, podcast kittens. I'm Kathy Cat. And I'm Lady Beard. And you're watching another. Make an adjective. Um. Hump. No, uh, flump. The bump ding. Episode of. Cat with, with Beard! Beard! Episode 69 today, ladies and gentlemen. That was in theory an adjective. Oh, that was awesome. In theory. That was awesome. <laughs> I curveballed you there. I didn't tell you I was Kathy Cat today. Yep. Yeah, oh, it was wonderful. It was good. Wonderful. It was, was good. Amazing. It was good. You did a very good impression of me. Thank you. Very uh, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> now you do your impression of me. I just did. Oh, okay. Did you not listen? Do it again? Yeah. Lady Beard coming at you with another earth shackling nose licking episode of. There you go. I got this down. Uh, well, well done. Yes. Well, well the, uh, done. We that have was to, fabulous. Yes, we have guests in studio. Yeah. Sorry so much. Kyle Car, is Car. giving us a bonus extra episode. We were supposed bonus. to be here for two episodes. Guess what? It's three. We had so much to chat about, and there's still loads more to talk about. He changed his shirt. I've even changed my shirt. Show us, show us your shirt, friend. It's a lovely shirt. Uh. So for everyone lovely, seeing it lady, on YouTube yeah. right now, it has some Japanese writing on top with a stitched in heart and on the bottom it has the picture of an elderly lady. Oh. The Japanese writing pretty much translates to I got the gift of being 100 years old uh, and how are you going to live your life? Nun, nun, which is like a sound of being like happy and joyful. Available for three easy installments of twenty nine ninety nine. Oh, include, uh, oh my gosh! Wait, so, the so this cost one, nice this is actually the picture <laughs> of the lady who was... Shipping cost me a play. <laughs> so this is actually the... Picture of a lady who yes, got I received years old. this T-shirt from the art director of Shiseido. Uh, he was at a party and he was giving out these T-shirts as a celebration. This is his friend, and she is apparently a hundred years old. And he made this uh, lovely T-shirt to commemorate her. And um, yeah, they're all of them have these light, lovely embroidered hearts and the different colors. And he gave them out to everybody. And I got one. Yay! Rem- remind us Beautiful. what the the company Shiseido does. Makeup, yeah. and makeup, and makeup, cosmetic products. She said it was pretty all known stuff, yeah. all around the world. Even my mom knows <laughs> Shiseido, so that means it's reached other realms than just Japan. Yeah. In Hong Kong, they have Fankel. Fankel. Less is more. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a lot of <laughs> brands all around the world. We can count them all up, but that's not what we're here for today. We're going to that's talk right. about several things. First of all, um, Kyle over here is not just an actor. He's also been a presenter. That mm-hmm. is and correct. And since we are sharing that presenter business, since I am the presenter of Japan, mm-hmm. you're going to try, Lady Bird, you're going to say the oh, name yes, of yes, my yes, program? Yes, well, just Japan, the nation. No, Kathy no. Cat presents the nation of Japan. No, no, what's, what's the name of my program on NHK? Come on, you got this. Lady Bird, you got Nihon? this. Japan. 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 Japan Railway. Kathy Cat. You don't want to say it anymore, do you? Japan Railway Journal. Yes! <gasps> Nailed it! You got Started. it! Oh, oh, I was did it. being <laughs> silly. I was being a bit <gasps> silly for a minute. It's Japan Railway Journal. Kathy Cat's on Japan Railway Journal. She does an excellent job excellent, presenting. Excellent, fabulous NHK job. World. So I present that program, and you have presented several other programs. So that is correct. Tell us more about your presenter career. Well, it all started back in, I believe it was 2015 or 14, or maybe it was 2012. I don't know the years anymore, but it was a while ago. I'd been doing uh, the Gojinimuchu show for a number of years, and I'd done some other programming. Then I finally broke into a program called Journeys in Japan. Hey! A lot of people probably watch this if you're curious about Japan. Journeys in Japan is one of those where the presenter takes you to different really exciting locations in Japan. Yes, exciting locations, exciting um, anecdotes of Japanese culture, festivals, um, ceremonial rites, uh, you know, you know, Food culture, all these types of things. You get to meet some amazing individuals, do some amazing experiences. And yeah, you get to yeah, converse with the people in Japanese, present in English. It's a back and forth good thing. It's a wonderful experience. It's a documentary. It's educational. It's entertaining. It's wonderful. And some of the most rewarding work I have done. Yes. Yeah, and you also did Trails to Oishi Tokyo. Yes, it was originally Trails to Skiji, but as we know, they tore that thing down. The fish market Skiji, yeah. he means? Yes, the fish market Skiji. And now it is... Toyosu. Eh? Toyosu. 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 I don't go there very often. Yes, Toyosu. And uh, now it's not called Trails to Skiji. It's called Trails to Oishi Tokyo. Delicious, Good. Delicious Tokyo. Tokyo. And that's all food culture. They choose an ingredient like an eggplant, for example. And you start going to Toyosu at the time, Skiji. And, oh, is this an eggplant? This is a Japanese eggplant. Oh, these are wonderful. Tell us about the eggplant. We learn about the eggplant from a person who's selling it there. And then they tell us where... 
they make the most delicious eggplants, or not more, I can't say the most delicious eggplants, but a place where they make a lot of eggplants. And then we go to the eggplant place, and we learn all about eggplants, and we eat all sorts of eggplants, and we, we harvest eggplants, and we play with eggplants, and we do everything with eggplants, and then that is the story. That was very yeah. politically yeah. correct in the structure of that answer. You can't be sued for what you said, which is great. Exactly. exactly. Not even by the eggplants. No, not even by the eggplants. And Tokyo Eye 2020? Oh, yes, it was also on Tokyo Eye 2020, but 2020 has passed. It that has. Was, uh, it's in the past. Yes, Tell was, us about Tokyo Eye. Mm. Tokyo Eye was, <clears throat> was a great program. I got to do some like uh, reporting work as well. Um, it was focused entirely on Tokyo. We did things like um, under the rails drinking culture, like in, you uh, know, in yeah, yeah. Shinbashi, mm. like under the That's old very cool, isn't structure. It? Yeah, they have uh. like these dome shaped, well, they're not really dome shaped when you go in there, but there's tiny little mm. eateries and like um, drinking places. They're tiny, you get maybe five gonna... people in there yeah. under like the rails. There are actually really cool. places under the rails, not just what you did when you were a teenager with your friends yes. going drinking, but actually, okay, in the countries where you're allowed to drink as a teenager, which you're not, and many others, sorry, I'm from Germany, but. Uh, so under the rails, there's actually the whole area under the rails that's built out with bars. Like underneath the train track. Underneath the train track. So Physically. there's space underneath it because they have been elevated so the cars can go underneath it. Yeah, so that's in Shinbashi, that's in Yurakcho, mm -hmm. some areas of Ginza. Um, Akihabara is doing a pretty fancy. They've got like, you know, cool like uh, hipster cafes yes. and things like that. It's just, there's a lot of stuff going on under the rails. So things, unique things that are going on in Tokyo is some of the things. That was one example, yes. It seems cool, yeah. actually, the under-the-rails yeah. activities. Yeah. How is presenting different from acting, and what do you like about both professions? Well, acting, you get to be a persona. You get to be someone who is not yourself, and that could be fun. You get to play a character. You get to change your voice, change your walk, change your aura, these types of things, these fantastical situations. You're in a different world. You, know, you can kind of shut off yourself and become something else, whereas presenting, you're yourself. Of course, you have a persona. You kind of got like you know, your posture right and everything, and you're getting presenter mode, but you're still yourself. And you can use your personal skills with real people. I'm not dealing with actors. I'm not dealing with professionals. I'm dealing with real people, and it's truly rewarding to have an, a real interaction. Whereas when you're acting, it is a fake interaction. You know, I mean, in the acting, it can feel real, but it's not, right? But with presenting, real people, real places, real situation, real stakes, and real adventures. Do you, for some of those, I assume some of those are freestyle and some of those I assume are scripted. How do you deal with scripts if you get one? Do you like sometimes like, oh, I actually would like to say this differently or do you, are you allowed to change them? For the most part, for presenting, um, in the beginning, they're really, because they didn't know my level of how I do my job, there would be scripts and they want me to hit certain points and I try to be really concise about that. And also depending on the director, they want you to ask specific questions and hit certain points. But these days, I kind of know what they want. And they'll give a script, but like, they're like oh, you'll be fine. It's like, oh, it's Kyle, he'll be fine. And I'll, I'll see the points they want me to hit. And through natural flow of conversation, I'll hit those points. Not There's not like, and but some directors, they want a specific, can you say this exact phrase? It's like, what is the, what do eggplants mean to the Japanese people? They want that question. Mm -hmm. And then the person is like, oh, I've never thought about that before. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> it's, an, it's an eggplant. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Can, can you, uh, okay, so um, how do you feel when you eat eggplants? Well, I mean, it's an eggplant. I mean, I never really thought about it before. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I dip it in miso and it's delicious. And he's like, no, oh, no, but what do you feel spiritually? Like, oh. Yeah, these types of situations. So it's not just me doing this, but I think the actual people themselves sometimes mm -hmm. when they're given a script, they're like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but most of the time I don't have a problem with it. I, it used to be a necessity, but these days, if I have a good rapport with the director, I know what they want. So I will just be Kyle, the presenter, because Kyle's the presenter has been doing this almost 10 years now. So I know what to do. Mm. That kind of thing. So when, it's when, off book. So once you made yourself a name for yourself, sorry. Yeah. Once you made a name for yourself and you've worked with these people a couple of times, then you can start taking liberties. Yes. Maybe at the start, not such a good idea to no, take liberties. Definitely not. But once they know you and your style, then you can start taking liberties. Exactly. And then they'll specifically be coming to you because they know you would have a good rapport with some of the farmers, for example, or the, a specific topic or things like that. You know, if this person's good on boats, for example, they'll take that person, you know, so these types of things. Mm -hmm. When you are interviewing a total stranger who's a farmer or a fisherman or something like that, who's not used to being on camera and not used to presenting, how much do you feel it is your job to kind of hold their hand through the mm -hmm. presenting process? Because a lot of the time they kind of 
It is absolutely 100% my job Mm. to make sure they're comfortable Mm. because it can be very jarring to have a camera on your face and like a director ask, oh, could you please talk about this? And there's a, uh, 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 they feel this pressure pressure and the need Mm. to please this person behind the camera. But I try in my interactions to go off book a little bit to get them talking about, like even when the camera isn't rolling, I try to make a, like a rapport, like a mm. humanize the interaction, get them laughing, get them comfortable with me, get some personal information from them, they'll get it from me and kind of build that. And then when we're talking, I try to make them forget the camera if I can by, mm. again, instilling humor or just like, you know, a lot of things get cut out, you know, but mm. when they edit, it gets, you know, it gets, it flows, it, it works, but it's 100% on me to make that work. That's, that's my approach. You know, if they're not comfortable, it's not natural. If it's not natural, it's just like, it looks like they're, they're, they've memorized the script. Yeah. And, like, I, I, and when a, an amateur tries to re, recount a script, it is one of the most mm. <laughs> horrifying things to watch. It's just like, they're they're like glass-eyed and like, uh, and the <laughs> eggplant tastes good with the miso paste. And uh, the soy sauce, uh, mm, it's great. And I'm just like, oh, sweet gold on snail. Oh, really? So, so with the miso and the, and the soy sauce, it really goes good together. Yes, it's very <laughs> di- and yeah, it's, mm. it's it's difficult to watch. Oh, I feel I feel you been there, done that. So I feel you yes. definitely feel you. You there. do. You have to do a lot of that, like on the street and that as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. But I think it's like that's why it's so important to do some kind of interaction before the camera is rolling mm. to just like, like loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, because we're humans. Good. We're not robots mm. at the end of the day. Like that's you know, actors can be robots, and you're gonna make this, the fakeness. But this has to be real when you're presenting. It has to be real. And you can't forget that they're human and you're human. If you make that connection, like connection is so important to make good documentary television. Mm. So that's what I try to focus on, the connection. And then, yeah, making them comfortable. Mm. Mm. Any other tips you have for that for people watching, listening? Get good at Japanese. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great advice to anyone who wants to come to Japan for mm. any reason at all. And hang out with some people from Kansai so you get a sense oh, of like Japanese nice. humor. Oh, good point. Because humor is the best way to break any, you know, any walls and ice that's going on there. There's like, uh, 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 like, get them laughing. They're like, oh, they just relax. You see it just come out of their shoulders. You just see the weight come down. They're like, oh, he's so funny. Huh? And they get comfortable. It's like, they know mm. you'll, you can hold them. Mm. Or that you, yeah, you will hold them and they'll be held. And be, being the feeling of being held in a situation mm. like that, in an uncomfortable situation, is so important, I think. Being supported that, through yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, I see. So we, you mentioned Japanese. We're actually going to be talking a little bit about your Japanese skill. Mm. But before that, one more question. Mm. What is like a really memorable on-set experience you have like any kind of cool memorable japan moment well i have i have funny experiences um i went fishing for this uh this aquatic being called kinmedai which was like splendid <coughs> alfonso or some weird Pardon name. Me? it's wow. called splendid alfonso or uh, like some kind of red sea bream thing like yeah, there's, there's all bream, these different yeah, yeah. A, a certain type of sea yes. bream it's this bright red fish that lives at the deep bottom of the ocean okay. and it's got these big eyes and it's bright red and the reason why it's bright red is because down in the deep dark depths of the ocean red is actually the color that the other fish can't see oh, oh. is that right so it's basically invisible wow yeah. really? so we're going to fish these invisible fish like 400 meters down and of course we have to go into open ocean and of course they told us that day yeah, it's, it's not it's gonna be fine it's gonna be whatever so we go out it was one hour pitch black at like 3 4 a.m wow. out into the open ocean one way and it was choppy it was super choppy and oh it was one of the most interesting experiences because it's getting bumpy and I'm just I'm feeling a bit concerned like it's it's really bumpy it's like is this okay I'm talking to the cat it's a small vessel and I'm talking to the captain he's like yeah yeah it's 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 absolutely fine and then I hear the radio and the guys on the radio are like, yeah, yeah, this is crap. Oh, we're, going, we're, we're turning back. This is this is too rough. We can't fish nothing out here. I was like, and I asked him, is, is everything okay? Are we going to be okay? Like, oh, no, no, it's prob- no problem. He's like, no, no, no. I gotta, I'm going back. I'm going back. And, and people are just saying they're going back. We're not We're not going to get any fish out of the, out in these conditions. And the boat's going like this. I'm like, oh, are we going to be okay? And he's like, oh, no, no, no problem at all. And then um, he starts fishing. Well, he starts setting the bait anyways, and I just I, I was just getting so seasick because I'm sitting on the side of the boat mm, with him as he's setting his little pieces boats. of squid. Yeah. And basically, I'm looking at the ocean like this. You ever been on that pirate ship ride at the fair yeah, where it goes yeah. like this? Yeah, so yeah. I'm looking up like this, and I'm looking at black water. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, I'm like, are we okay? Oh, it's fine. And he's like putting on the bait. And then I'm like, I need to go under the underground or 
under the boat because I was just like, oh, I was spinning. I was done. Like, oh, really? And I'm like laying down. And then the director comes out. He's like, hey, what are you doing? He's, he's bringing a fish. So I get yelled at the director. I got to go up. And he's pulling in the fish. I'm like, yeah, this is great. We got a fish. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. And it's going like this. Mm-hmm. And we, we got about 30 fish. Wow. But I wow. We were out there for eight hours. Oh, God, Ooh. no. And Did you not like Ralph? I did not Ralph, but the assistant director, he was, <laughs> he came on there. Within an hour, he was like down below the bottom of the boat and he's like holding his knees and he did not move for the entire eight hours. Wow. He was just in there. And the director's like, oh, screw this guy. These really? young people these days. And then, of course, I find out later, the cameraman, he was harking up yellow vomit. And the director was the only one who was fine. And um, I was like laying down, like holding my head, like, oh my God. It was eight hours of absolute, sorry, eight hours of absolute hell. And then wow. we finally get back to the bay and we're unloading the fish and the director and the camera are going off to check the footage. And I, I'm looking at the fish and this, the captain, his buddy rolls up in his, in his truck. It's like, hey, buddy, how was it out there? It's like, oh, I heard it was pretty rough. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. he's been telling me the whole time. Oh, don't go to the night. Oh, it's no, it's no fine, problem. Fine, it's yeah. fine. It's die Joe, but it's fine. Absolutely nothing. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it's, it's fine. He's going to say it's fine. He's like, <laughs> which means, holy crap, it was crazy. And I'm just like, you <laughs> son of a. Uh, like this guy lied to me the entire time, uh, telling me it was okay when it was ya bye. Well, he can't <laughs> tell you why you're out there, can you? <laughs> no, no he's like, is this okay? He's like, you're gonna die, son. Like, you're gonna can't reply like We're that, gonna die it. today, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Because this is literally how I was doing. Jesus now, <laughs> say your prayers. Oh. So, so I have to say, in in his merit, he was very good at handling the situation, keeping everyone calm by yeah. saying it was Dijob. He was a liar, but it was Dijob. It was fine. But at the end, I just wanted to take one of those giant fish. We got a good two kilo giant bright wow. red fish. I want to take him by the tail and slap him in the face with it. But I did not. Because it's a delicious fish. It's worth Ooh, the price. Like if you ever come to Japan, try Kin Medai mm. because it's one of the most delicious deep sea fish you'll ever have. There's so much umami. It's oh, so it's rich. Good. My God, I was so happy to eat that fish. Like the whole thing, the shoot up into that point, everything was delicious. It was the best fish I've ever had. I was I was dying. It was so good. But the, the actual fishing was the last day because the, the conditions were just mut. Mm. So the final day, it was heaven up into that point, And then the fishing happened. And then I hated Kin Min Dai. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Wow, you got a trauma. A little yeah. takeaway from there is, though, that if you are on that boat and you you are like, I don't want to do this, you cannot strut off. Like, as a as a presenter, as a talent, you have to pull through. You got to get it done. I, I had shoots on tiny yeah. boats before and all the stuff. They know. They're like, oh, yeah, you're going to get seasick. But they also will tell you things like you're not allowed to take meds against seasickness because mm. they will make you tired, stuff like that. Yeah, there's literally so, nothing you can do. Yeah. Like, it's an eight-hour trip. They're going there to work. You're actually with fishermen. These boats aren't prepared for you and your shoot. Mm. You are just... Guests. Guests mm. on that boat, and mm. they're going hell or high water, and you're on that boat for eight or nine hours, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's no going back. You're on yeah. that boat till the end. I, I you can't just say, I don't want to so... do this, because then you're never going to get a job again, Exactly. Ever. you got to get it through. you got to get so, through. And I yeah. imagine sometimes you're in the way when they're running around doing their Definitely. The they're like, get out of the way. Yeah. I had a similar situation like that when I was uh, doing horsehair crab off the coast of Hokkaido. What? 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 Horsehair crab. They're like, they're little prickly little cute things. They're just... Delicious little they're, things. They're crabs. They're crabs. But they have horse hair. They're on called them. horse hair crabs. Okay. They're on Okegani. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar? Yeah, they're really prickly and furry little things, but they're absolutely delicious. And we're off the coast of Hokkaido, and um, I decided to drink um, the, what do you call that, funayoi kusuri. Oh, uh, like uh, motion sickness. The basically. motion sickness um, stuff. And I drank, and I was fine, and the director was cocky. He's been on all these boats all the time. He's telling the cameraman, because the cameraman drank one too. He's like, you got an extra one for me? He's like, sure. I gave one to the cameraman. He's like, just in case. And the director's like, he's making fun of us. Like, oh, you're taking the motion sickness? What are you, like, are you a child? What's wrong with you? You're a professional, right? And he's, he's, make, he's taking the piss on this guy. And I'm just like, oh, whatever. I didn't think anything of it. Of course, we get out there. It's one of these eight-hour boat rides, right? It's And it's bumpy. But I've taken my medicine. I'm fine. And then um, me and the cameraman, they start pulling in. Crabs and me and the camera at the front of the boat. We're just filming this. We're we're in the way absolutely. So we're at the end of the boat. It is it is black water out there. There's seagulls everywhere. And then the boat's going like this, and they're pulling in crabs. And I'm just like, oh, okay. But I'm still reporting. I'm doing my job because I have nowhere to go. I have to do this. I can't say no. I just got to keep reporting. We got great footage. I'm like, but where's the director? 
Where's the direct? He's gone. I'm like, where the hell did he go? So we got a break in between uh, the one, the fishing spot. So I go up to the back of the boat and here between the main mast of the boat and the little tent where the, the fishermen sit, where they're going out in the ocean, he's sitting there like this on the floor. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, no, no. He's like, no. Kyle, are you okay? <laughs> like, are, are, what's wrong? He's like, oh, no. No, no, I'm, oh, I'm sick. And he's like, He's like, do you need, and I had an extra motion sickness uh, tablet and I pulled it out of my pocket. He's like, do you need one of these? <laughs> and his eyes are like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, is it, is it okay? And he's like, here you are. <laughs> oh man, but I can't, once you actually already have it, it's almost too late as well. It's too late. He, he, he recovered eventually. He, he was kind of like on his knees. <laughs> he's, what? he's filming like it this. sounds it's like rough. those little boats those tiny boats they are rough to film on trust me it sounds like you guys get put through torture on boats it sounds like that's <laughs> the name of the show you're filming it's a, it's boats. absolute hell like some of them are if it's in a in, in, a, in a bay it's there's no waves you know okay. it's it's fine it's it's chill whatever but you're going out in open ocean good lord oh yeah boy oh mm -hmm. god get your sea legs boy because mm -hmm. you got no choice you're mm -hmm. there for eight hours and you'll like afterwards still feel like you're swaying for a while yeah when i go lot. home in the uh in the bath at home especially for the um the kinmedai i sat in my bath because that's how i told myself because sometimes you need to do mental techniques to keep your center i was telling myself okay at the end of this day i'm going to be home i'm going to be in my hot bath that's just in my head. Like at the end of this, there is there is a perk. I'm going to be in my hot bath tonight, safe. I'm not going to die in this boat. Okay. And then when I finally got home, I got in my hot bath. I closed my eyes, and all I could see was black waves. Oh, no, like I'm just yeah. in the water. It's like, whoa. I'm like, oh. <sighs> <sighs> holy crap. Yeah, and that persisted for about an hour, but yeah. It sounds horrendous. Yeah, the the things we do in the <laughs> entertainment industry. You put your you put your life and your soul on the line, but you know it's for entertainment purposes. Was there, so. and we, like, were you? Was there any kind of here's your might vomit and die compensation? Was there any Absolutely of that? not. No, you're expected no, no, no. to show up and harden up and just do it. Whatever. Just do the thing. Do the thing. Just pull through. I mean, you're a professional. If you think darn about it. it. Some of the uh, com comedy actors they do way worse things in front of the camera. But when they show it to be a Japanese comedian, you're signing up for that, are you not? Like that's what a Japanese comedian does. You basically get tortured on film and everyone laughs. Hmm. That's not what. Presented hey, it's it's still the entertainment industry. Yeah. But if you sprain your ankle mid set, beard, do you go out there limping or do you just suck it up, tape well, it up? Suck it up, you power through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, same thing. Just same, same. Be just, ready for some sacrifices. Justin Bieber broke his ankle on stage once. He kept going. It's very impressive, actually. <laughs> it's very impressive. He was like 15 baby, at the time. Baby, baby, baby. He was. <laughs> It was. it was very impressive. He finished the song, I think. I think. can't remember if he finished the whole set or not. It was very impressive, though. He did well. He was 15 years old or we something. You can always sit down and play guitar like it never happened. Okay, from the Bieber the to Biebs. the JLBT. I'm going to make a big jump here. Well, that's a, <laughs> hey, that's a segue. From the JB to, to the, the JLPT. Oh, oh, you look did at that. that. Nice. We nailed wow. it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I need one too. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good job. I'll Thank you for that. I would tell you one time. That was good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. now at the JLPT, which is their Japanese language. Proficiency test. Proficiency test. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is like the worldwide test that you do to prove how much Japanese you can actually speak. So you said you started teaching yourself Japanese back in Canada. What was your level then when you were... Before you Horrendous. Came to Japan. <laughs> okay. Horrendous, absolutely. No, Worse I than started mine. in um, uh, uni. You've been oh. at it for ages. Well, I, I played with some uh, books that I bought at the uh, the local Canadian bookstore called Chapters Indigo now. Um, sponsor, please. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I bought some books there, learned a couple of kanji. I really didn't know anything. I started um, studying it in uni. And then my second year in, there was a, an exchange program to go to Japan. Mm. And so then I started in Japan. That's the famous exchange time. program you mentioned on the first episode. When that you is here. correct. Yes. All right, good. So what was like the thing that kind of catapulted your Japanese skills? Is that, is that Going to English Japan. Way of saying things? Mm. Like catapulted. Yeah, it's good. Shot catapulted. it to the stratosphere. Yes. Kathy catapulted you. Yeah. Kathy uh, catapulted. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy catapulted. Kathy catapulted. That could be, be your. That could be your pro wrestler name. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. The what Kathy catapult. That's your finisher. Kathy catapult. The Kathy catapult. Great idea. Hey. Ding ding ding. My God, this is heinous. Um. Yes, catapult. Coming to Japan would catapult your Japanese right away because. All day, every day, Japanese in ears, in your mouth, out your mouth, 
in your eyes. It's everywhere. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's overwhelming. So that is definite catapult. And mm. you get stuck on it. You want to learn more Japanese. So I kept, I came back, kept learning more Japanese in university. And before I graduated, I actually took the JLPT and got two. Oh, wow. Yeah. So your university, in university actually already you had a high two. level then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two is, okay, so two to is explain, the best. five is the easiest one. Mm. It goes five, four, three, two, one. One means you're pretty much you're number one. Fluent in a bunch of words that mm. you don't even you need to know. You can now say chicken pox in I, Japanese. Things like only academics and lawyers yeah. would need yeah, to know. That's what you're learning one. So two is the one that you really need for all practical purposes. Mm. You already had that before you finished university. I did because there was, there was a lot of actual studying of Japanese. That yeah. time where I was actually focused on studying lots of kanji, lots of yeah. sentence structure, lots of grammar. Like I actually, actually focus on it. Um, and But... Unfortunately, with the JLPT, the jumps between the levels are just so high. They are big jumps, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like three to two is, mm, and then two to one, good lord. Is it really? Yeah, it's the monstrous. jumps are high, yeah. The, 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 really? the, that's what deterred people. Actually, there used to be four levels, oh. and the jump between three and two was so high that people just gave up at three. Really? So that's why they made it now five, so they, to make it a little bit easier to get to two. Uh, but hmm. apparently the jump between two and one is still the super elitist jump. Really? So yeah. that one they haven't made easier. I didn't even attempt to do JLPT1 until I was in Japan for 10 years because wow. I just didn't want anything to do with it. Because when you're getting to the reading section, it's literally like reading traditional Chinese. <laughs> like, wow. where did all the hiragana and katakana go? It's just like, really? it's all Chinese characters. Like, oh. So yeah, went on gut. Went on gut. Wow. Went on gut. Gut okay. feeling. No. So, so, how, when, so how, how, what? Just winged it. Hold winged it. Winged it. Winged it. I don't think you can win lo wing Hold level my one. Ocha. <laughs> I mean, I, I did actually speak with uh, with another lady who got the the number level one, and I said, "Hey, do you think you could get this even if you're not like if even if you're working super full time with like the extra overtime and all of that?" And she's like, "Nah." Nah, <laughs> nah, you can't, nah, you can't get level one if you're working full time plus probably unpaid overtime and all of that. You don't have time for that one. You're going to do it. How did you do it? Well, thank goodness for my line of work where I get to go around Japan and meet all these wonderful people, have mm -hmm. these wonderful experiences. And because of all these different experiences and different people, I get to learn all these like every documentary show I do, I learn new words. Mm. Like all these semon yoga, these, these what, what, what do you call Technical that? terms. Technical mm. terms. Like I'm always getting those into my ears and just learning. And if, if, of course, contextual. So it's not just me looking at a textbook and like, okay, this means this. Okay, I don't, I don't know the hell, I'll never use that word. It's literally there and I'm, it's ingrained in my memory, learning those types of words. So all my experiences kind of accumulate into my vocabulary and vernacular. That I get. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that, that, that I get, but mm. how? Did you then transfer all those words you heard? Because that's the hurdle for a lot of people of, you know, you're able to speak it, you're able to understand it, but can you read or write it? How did you get the kanji, those hard Chinese characters? Mm. How did you learn those then? Well, that unfortunately is repetition. And I'm not one to study textbooks no anymore because I couldn't, I tried. I was like, I wanted to, I'm going to get M1. I'm going to study. I looked at the textbook. I'm like, oh, good Lord. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm in my thirties. I can't do this anymore. So I'm like, you know what? Give me some manga. Give me some Japanese comics, really complicated ones. I read one called Investor Z, which is about investing in the Japanese stock market. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm watching these really niche animations that have all these like super niche terms. Like, yeah, I was just like, because I have the subtitles on, I'm watching that. And I really did not want to study textbooks. Like, how about this? I tried, I thought to myself, how about I study a topic that I'm interested in, in Japanese with Japanese people. So if I'm using the same level of Japanese that a Japanese person will be using when they're studying something in Japanese, maybe that might help me accumulate the level of Japanese I would need to pass the N1 test because it's supposed to equate that your your daily Japanese is on par with a native Japanese person. So I did that. I studied to be an onsen sommelier. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what? What? Boy, that was what? very sorry, that was very uh, rude. Pardon? An onsen sommelier. Oh, excuse me. What is an onsen sommelier? Uh, <laughs> an onsen sommelier is a uh, hot spring sommelier. It was an onsen sommelier. Yeah, but sommelier. But isn't a sommelier someone who drinks something and then goes, mm, well, nice it's, taste? It's a bit of a connoisseur. You know, you mm. go into the onsen. Oh, this is a salt bath. Oh, this is bicarbonate bath. Oh, this is an iodine bath. Oh, that's good for this. Oh, this is good for eczema. Oh, this is Wait, good for muscle pain. You're telling me English. I don't know. What's the word? Somali? What? Somali? You, know, like you know, wine sommelier. No. Like well, Somali, like Somali. someone who like tastes different wines. I've never heard this before. It sounds to me like you're saying Somalian, as in person Somalian. from Somalia. <laughs> no, I've never it's heard an this expert word. in 
a specific thing. You have like uh, Japanese sake sommeliers. You have wine sommeliers, and then there's onsen sommeliers. I think a lot has been said for Australian English when I am being taught my own language by a German. I think we have all just seen a culture in motion. Oh dear. dear Germans me. are gifted in the linguistic capacities. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Indeed. Vielen Dank. Don't uh, wait, wait, the, and the German's gone. Oh, why now? <laughs> Hang on. All right. So a Somalian taught you about onsens. No, no, no. <laughs> he tried to become a, like a professional in onsen. Okay. Just Basically, I wanted to be um, have noteworthy knowledge about onsens because I like onsens. Do you hot like the springs. onsen? Mm, We've discussed the onsen before. Yeah, I love jumping awesome. in some volcanic hot onsen. water naked. It's one of my favorite mm, things to do. It's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Good she good likes good. the onsen. I love the onsen. Yeah, onsen mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm not how do you by become or how do you I didn't even know there was an onsen sommelier option. Sommelier. Um well there is. Um, there's plenty of online courses you can do in Japanese if you have the ability to find them. Um yeah, I just did that. I leveled that up a bit and I was just learning all these phrases and stuff, all these complicated um technical terms and all these different kanjis. And then I decided this isn't enough and maybe I could use this for work too. So I decided to become an hot spring bathing consultant as well. That was a two day course where I actually studied with Japanese people at a Japanese bathhouse. And then we had to like make plans for people to tell them which bath they should go into for how long and how much water they should drink. And we're doing this all in Japanese. It was uh-huh. great. And so just doing that, studying for those things, reading Japanese manga, watching Japanese anime, without reading a textbook, I might have flipped through it once or twice, like literally once or twice, I managed to pass the JLPT one somehow. That is, so yes. in order to pass the JLPT level one, you have to first become a hot spring bathing consultant. Yes. Who exactly. are these Japanese people who are doing these hon- onsen classes with you? Uh, completely random people. I mean, there's people that are in the industry itself. And then there's, I literally met a man who his hobby is getting different licenses and certifications. Like, oh, this is my cool. 121st certification. Like, oh my God. What are you even that's doing? He's like, yeah, I'm trying to get the most certifications ever. I'm like, okay. Well, wow, really? Good for you, sir. Yeah, You're right. like, Japan loves certifications, certifications wow. though, to mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah, so, true. How did you find out about those certifications in the first place? You just oh, I just looked it? online. Yeah, just mm. Google, Google, Google. Okay, and so and now this. <laughs> wow, what is but, it? Hey, but, but the N one. I imagine there's the N one vocabulary you need to learn, and I imagine there's more than onsen words. So there did you... isn't. I did not ace the test. It was not a hundred percent, like entirely. Like I, I had a, a passing grade. It wasn't. It wasn't a bad grade. It was like mid. I made it got it like a B. So what oh, ones okay. did you get wrong? What could you? Have I don't expected? even know what I got wrong because they don't give you the. Well, like they might. Uh, do they give you the results back? Like the, they, no, they give, give you, you numbers. So they say mine. vocabulary this mark. much, yeah. okay. listening this much. So you have like a. So if you. Very bad in one. You can slightly balance it out with another, but if you go under a certain potent percentage in one, then all the other ones can be perfect. You're still not going to pass. Exactly. But the interesting thing about my method of studying, when I was doing the test, I come across a question that was like, I know this. And it was like, I had this answer from an anime, for example. No. <laughs> so, oh, that was what? that episode of that anime. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No. Do you yeah, know, remember so what it was? Oh, no, no. It was just this random, like, wisp. So there's maybe something from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and... <laughs> Dr. Stone, maybe something from One Piece, you know. Right, so <laughs> you got your JLPTN1, which is remarkably impressive. Have you done the, the Super Kanji test as well? I have no desire to do that test. No. Yeah. There's another test that's not the JLPT. It's the uh, I'm really, really kanji good at Kanji level test. proficiency. That one is, though, mainly for Japanese people. I is think really? foreigners don't really take that one. Well, I, that's the I flex. Met, that's the flex. Yeah, that's an that. extra flex. Yeah, I met the, the Gyaru who passed the test, and she became famous for being the Gyaru who passed that test oh. because that test is so hard to pass. Mm. So you kind of can, like, show it a little bit around and go, like, look at me, I passed this test, I'm very, very smart. If you've made it, it's kind of an extra flex. It's all about the flex. All about the, the flex. Certifications and the flex. Remember that, folks. The more flex and certifications you can get before coming to Japan, the better. Speaking Something of to flexing. Talk about. Speaking of flexing. Yes. Where do you live? I live oh, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I have a better one. I have a better one. Oh, you just segue. said you learned a lot of the vocabulary by oh. going to many different places. Oh, good, yes. This is how I would interlude oh, into that. Oh, I cat is very good at this cat. job. Cat. Cat. So I heard... 
you know, about places that you're very knowledgeable on the place called Machida. Machida. Which I thought is kind of, at first thought was Kanagawa Prefecture, but it is actually still Tokyo. How dare you? I know, it's We still are Tokyo. right on the precipice of Tokyo. And if you cross a river, you're in Kanagawa or Yokohama or wherever you want to call it. So the river is kind of like the, the natural border there. Yeah, and the invisible borders. That what if you're cross. swimming in the you river the and you're floating in the middle and half of your body is in Tokyo and half is in Kanagawa? You'd never cross the river because the flesh-eating carps would kill you first. Flesh-eating cops? Carps. Carps. Um, just for all of our listeners, there are no flesh-eating carps in the river. Don't worry when you come to Japan. Are there flesh-eating cops Test that theory. In the river. Test it and see. What about the cops? Do they eat your flesh? <laughs> the Kanagawa cops? <laughs> the Kanagawa cops. Bad cops. All right. Bad cops. We, we gotta, gonna we gotta do, do a, cha- a challenge for you. You have. Right. Uh, I don't know if you have a timer here. Let me let me see if I can get you a timer. Um, you're gonna get 20 seconds to list as many of Machida's attractions oh. as you can. Attractions. You, you ready? Oh God! Uh, All right. Okay. Set a timer for twenty seconds. You got a person in your phone. I mean, watch. It's running. Go. Oh good. Uh, well, there's a Nakamisa Shoten guy. That's a shopping district. There's the uh, the Squirrel Museum. Uh, squirrel. It's not a museum. It's the Squirrel Park. There's the uh, Shikisai Namori, which is a lovely park as well. There's the uh, Serigawa Koen. Uh, there is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. What else do we have? Uh, oh, well, there's, there's the lovely city hall. Uh, there's also. All the, right, you're done. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? <laughs> so, what did you want? Did you want a Japanese or English? I don't know. No, no, it was fine. That was okay, fine. It was, was fine. fine. Okay. Good, good Tell job. us good about good why you 20. know things to do with Machida and why we'd ask you to recite interesting facts about the place. Yeah, no, mate. See, about half about yeah, 15 years ago. No. When I first came to Japan as an exchange student, I went to a university called JF Oberlin. Oberlin Daigaku. Oh. Okay, which is located in Fuchinobi, which is actually Kanagawa technically. <gasps> but um Gasp. As, as far as it's kinda of, it's one of those things. Gasp, is, which, this gasping. half is this and this Gasp. is okay. Anyways, flesh eating carps in the middle, the whole thing. So um I went there as an exchange student for a year and I lived in Machida. And then when I came back to Japan, I decided to go back to Machida because I knew Machida and it was easy for me. So And that's why he can tell so many things about Machida in twenty seconds. You are the first one to do twenty seconds on Machida. Thank you. Very good. Oh We've God. never had that before. Oh, good job. I, interrupted I should probably be better at that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We got. And now I'm actually. I should, now I should add. Connection. Thank okay. you. For that. You got the, okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. I should add something. Add. Uh, I'm actually. I do a little work for City Hall as well. Hey. Eh? Oh. I'm. Oh, I'm. You do? I'm regarded as a Machida specialist at oh City Hall. Really? Okay. So do I you uh, like... work directly. Uh, well, not directly. Sometimes I do panels with the mayor. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been on some panels. Panel really? discussions, a bunch mm-hmm. of businessmen and hotel people, really? whatnot, are in the audience, and I'm talking about the allures and uh, beauties really? of Machida and how we can improve. You could. What makes you so happy and proud about Machida that you decided to? Like a lot, a lot of people don't want people to know where they live, but you're mm. like, I live here and I'm proud of it. Mm. Why? What's cool? Oh, it's just it's just a great place. I mean, I also do um, the local um, the festival, the Omikoshi, the portable shrine. I've been oh, doing yeah, that for that's years. Good fun. And there's great people that do that. That's fun. And um. It's just such an easy place to live. I don't know. It's so, the access is so good. You should know this the in your excess. train, the access. Japan Railway access. Journal. Yes. I know, you. he, he counted up all the train lines and I was so proud. Please do it one more time. You have the romance car, you have the Odaku line, and you have the JR Yokohama line. All three of these things go through Machida. And it's great to have the romance car because I can go straight to Hakone. I can go to Odawara. I can go to Shinjuku, which is the most I use it for. Like if there's an early morning, I don't want to ride the morning rush train. I book a romance car. Yep. I can right sit way to do it. and just go to Shinjuku in luxury. Or if I've had some uh, bad oysters, which I had on a, one of my uh, documentary trips, oh, no. I could book the romance car. We got a toilet in it, and it's very useful to have one of those. What is a and romance car? Would, oh, well, the romance car, if you would like to know more about the romance car, which is a special type of train, then please check out Japan Railway Journal on the episode on romance car, because that episode is actually really good. We went to the romance car museum. There's a oh, romance car a museum. museum. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely oh. highly recommend it. Shameless plug. It's well, at NHK World. Can you just tell me now, because I legit Japan don't Railway know. Journal. No, 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 sure, you should check it out. So we <laughs> like and subscribe. I'm gonna get, get you all like ha- hungry for that episode now because uh, it was a really fun episode. So, Indeed. So it's like um, if you explain it, some most of the or if you lived in Japan for long enough, there is like usually a train line and then there's like a special train where you pay a little bit more and it, it's a bit. Oh, faster. that like half a Shinkansen couple. train. Yeah, yeah, they call that yeah, a romance. Yeah. 
try and do they? No, they they named they call it that the limited express or something. Well, they call it Roman's car because they were the first Romans. ones to have seats next to each other, yeah. which don't really have a hot rest in between. So you can yeah, romance so, ooh, on the Romans. You can car. romance. So romance as in romantic, not of the Roman. No, 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 not the Romans. No. Not those ones. Okay, well, <laughs> of course Romance you would go there. Of course, right. Baby Bear and would go there. And of course, it's on the, it takes it to Hakone, which is a special destination for romance. For because romance. Because it's onsen not for romance. places. For you know, romance. people take their girlfriends or their extra what if girlfriends de- to what go if, for an onsen What if your girlfriend party? is a Roman? Then it's, then it's great. Then it's romance <laughs> for the Romans. And right. we are out of time, oh, folks. Right. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, any any cool place in Machida you can recommend to us, apart from well, all the, the squirrel park. Right away, like um, the station itself is just so convenient for shopping because mm. it's compact. Like it's all there. Like there's like three or four department stores right as soon as you come out the exit. Like they're all there, so you can go there, shop, and get the heck out of there. Like I used to go into town and do shopping when before I went home for souvenirs and stuff, but I just do it in Machida now. It's just like, it's just, it's all there. You get, we got Don Quixote, we've got a loft, we've got Tokyo Hands, we've got Marui, we've got Lumine, we've got, what, a, we've got great food what, what everywhere. What do you tell our foreign viewers who don't live in Japan? different department stores. What those things are. They're all different department lovely stores. Lovely department stores with lovely shops and lovely eateries inside them. Just wonderful, wonderful air-conditioned places, which you'd appreciate in the boiling hellmouth summers of Japan. Mm. And lovely, lovely smells, lovely people. Just, just lovely. And lovely. how did you organize yourself now when you get to hang out with the mayor and you're like a lobbyist? Well, it started... <laughs> there ought to be a law! Um, I started out as a common, col- col- columnist. I used to write a article in a local town paper there. Oh. And I did that for about three years. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I got introduced to the mayor and other you know, people of the community. And did they, you write them in English or in Japanese? In Japanese. Ooh. I wrote a column in Japanese wow. about okay. the uh, the allures and uh, good points about Machida. And um, yeah, it was well-reviewed or well-received at the time. And right. um, that just, that eventually ended. But by the time that ended, I was offered a, a role. We're working with City Hall talking about how to improve the dynamics of the city, how to bring in more tourism, really? these types mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. Tourism to Machida. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. every city wants people to come to it, right? Yeah. Right. You Just know. for the sake of spending money in the local yeah, exactly. economy. And local economy, you got to boost it. So how can we bring more people to Machida? How can we make it more appealing? How do we get more people to move to Machida? Mm. How do we get young families to come here? Like all these things. And during all my travels around Japan and seeing all these different villages and like cities and stuff and what they're doing, I have all this information input in my head. And when they come upon something I might have a, a suggestion for, it just comes out. It's like, well, in this city, they do this. How about we do this? Oh, yeah, we could try that. These types of things. It's like it's all in there. And I consult, essentially, these Ooh. days. Okay, wow. that's amazing. Yeah. As someone who works in the entertainment industry, though, have you never been worried about someone just finding where you live? Stalking you? Well, Machida is a large city, so it's not like they're going to know where I live. Mm. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, I've been stalked before. But I've been stalked. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to talk about that, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds okay, very dark. exciting. Very fast, very dark. <laughs> it's not exciting. Uh, no, but um, I'm not too worried about it because Machida is a large place. There's many smaller stations within much and it's it's mm-hmm. large there's lots of forests and things like that that they can find me and bury me in but um, <laughs> no 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 uh, but um yes it's it's relatively safe i'd say mm-hmm. so i don't worry too much about it because the support from the community is worth it you know mm. you know all right. It's good to have a backup, you know. I'm from Machida. Okay, Machida. so um lady bear wants to come to Machida. What yeah. what should lady bear do apart from shopping? Eat. Eat? Eat. What? What I eat? Kyle. Well, there's many lovely things you could do, but there's a lot of good street food. One of the places I like to recommend is the Nakamisa Shotenga. It's the oh. old shopping district. You just walk That's down there. Nice. There's lovely things to eat. One yeah. of the most delicious things are the yaki shorompo, Ooh. the fried shorompo. Oh, they're so good. They're mm. better than Yokohama. I'm saying it. They're better than Yokohama. Um, they're the best. And then start they, a turf war. Yeah, there was a turf war. There's so many great little shops. There's this little curry shop in there that's great, too. It's tiny. They got katsukare. It's delicious. Breaded cutlet curry, for those of you who don't know. They have, like, like fried tuna, karages. There's, like, the taiyakis. There's so many delicious street food you can eat in just this alley alone. It makes it worth coming to Machida that just for remarkable. that, for example. Mm. And there's, we got lovely parks with lovely nature and lots of things to do and lots of shopping. All that right. Sounds fantastic. Well, we can tell that you've been living your very best life yeah. in Japan. Yeah. 
Final thing, would you have some sort of advice for someone who wants to make it some sort of career in Japan? Last time you were talking about acting, this time it can be presenting or just generally having to, or maybe getting in touch with your local government. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe being a advice. representative for a uh, local council. Yeah, maybe well, it's funny, with... you can actually get a segue into working with local government through the JET program. They have uh... two variations of doing that. You become a uh, language teacher or you could work in local, like a municipality somewhere at oh, City Hall. Oh, you can? That's yeah, new. that's available, yeah. So you could, if you want to do community work or work in that sort of capacity, do the JET program into there if that's what you want to do. But For, that's not the path you chose. That's not what I took. I did not do the JET program. I just ended up there organically through my work. You know. So how did you start writing the column? Did they approach you or did you approach them? I was introduced to the paper through a local politician, actually, because, you know, politicians like to support their local talent, right? And he's like, Kyle, this is, it's a, such a waste. We need to be pushing you more as a match to talent. He's uh, like, I'm going to introduce you to this, uh, this lady. And, and if you work it off, we could maybe do a, no, well, let's see, maybe you can do something together. So I was introduced this lady. She had a space in her, her town paper and I started writing a column. And then she actually took me under her wing, started showing me a lot of things about Machida. She's like my Machida senpai. And yeah, and she just, she started connecting me to other people. She connected me to the mayor, like connection. It starts with connections. It's just, it just it, it builds. Like we talked about this in previous podcasts where it all builds on each other and then just and one connection leads to another connection. Connection is important. Have they ever wanted to brand you as like Machida Kyle? Like Atsugiri Jason. He's Jason <laughs> from Atsugiri. You know what I'm saying? Do they ever want to make you like Machida Kyle? Maybe if I get a larger on the, like the main television in a larger capacity, I'm sure they want me that's something. But right now, a lot of my stuff is international. Mm. So locally, they're like, who's, who's Machida Kyle? But if I'm on... You know, the main TV channels, like on Fuji Tetebi yeah. or something like that, they'll be like, oh, Machida Kai, he's from Machida. <laughs> we love him. We love him. We always knew. There seems to be a big thing in Japan about being proud of where you come from or the, the area where you live because then people want to support you. That's why some of the, the idols sometimes have like the name of where they live mm. attached to it because mm. they're like the idols of that prefecture. Mm. So you're like, oh, they're proud of where we are. So the people of that prefecture or that city feel like connected. So mm. is, is that one of the things that you feel as well? I, it's getting to that point. There's a, like when they, I walk through the town and I meet people that I know. I was like, oh, I saw you on that thing, Kyle. Yeah. And they're just really happy to see me. Like well, one of the biggest uh, personifications of that is the the yearly um, portable shrine festival. Like these people, not all of them are from Machida. Some are from Machida. And the other, pe other people from other areas come and help with the shrine. They're like from Hachioji or Saganohara. No. They, like, it, that's something that they do in the Mikoshi community. But those people will remember me. And they'll know I'm from Machida. It's like, oh, Kyle, I saw you on that thing. Ah! And they'll be really proud that I'm in their, their Mikoshi group. Or I'm proud that I'm from Machida. And it really boosts their, bolsters their spirit. And like they make me do silly things sometimes at the end of the... When I was in the, the, the before and after commercial, that was just ridiculous. They... They kind of like reenacted it with these naked firemen and like the fundoshi things and they're doing spins and stuff. And they're like, Kyle, come up here. And like, oh, OK. And I had to be silly. So like they, they have some pride there. And of course, it will only grow as as I do. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So wow. we'll see how it goes. Right. A fundoshi is like a traditional tea bag. Yeah. yeah. It's like tea a loincloth, oh. a Japanese loincloth. Loin Mm -hmm. That's what Very a lot of people wear for these festivals. Yeah. Like, all right. Mm, love not, it. All right. It keeps it all in <laughs> place. Have all of it. No way to comment on this mm -hmm. right now. I've mm -hmm. the okay, didn't. Try a loincloth. Right. Change your life. <laughs> It'll change something. No. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm -hmm. um, change the trajectory of the conversation, though. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly. Oh. No. Duh, you'd put me here on in, in uh, the hot spot. So, um, we, we, we really actually have seen quite a lot of facets of you. We, we talk this you as an actor, as a presenter, um, as someone who just supports Machida and represents Machida. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us or many, maybe anything upcoming that you'd like to plug? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no sorry. All right, well, that's easy. Bye. That problem's no. easily solved. Okay. okay. This, so. this podcast will go up as the earliest in three weeks, right? Three weeks, right? So okay. three weeks from now. Okay, I'll plug, um, okay, I'll plug what I'm... If you're okay. allowed to plug something, yes. then three weeks from now. So this is probably um, non-disclosure in here. If the case says anything happening in three weeks, you can plug it in three well, weeks. Well, all right. So now we learned many, many facets of you. Mm. Actor, presenter, representative of Machida, oh. lots and lots of flesh eating fish, apparently. Mm, and, and police. Uh, terrible. All that stuff. Anything upcoming in your career that you'd like to plug? Anything you want to talk about? 
Well, I definitely like to plug my, uh, of course, my collaborations with Mr. Sunshine because that seems to be kind of growing right now. Um, please check those out on the YouTubes. It's uh, Sunshine Ikizaki Doji Tsuyaku for the, those of you who can write the Japanese. Unfortunately, they don't have it, uh, the, the actual name in English, which is part of the humor of the whole thing, but it's there. If you look up Kyle Card, it might pop up in the in the algorithm. I also want to, of course, plug um, the Benza, which I'm part of, my... Uh, internationally um, broadcasting um, Japanese drama that we made here independently. Um, we'll be working on the third season of that hopefully this year, so stay tuned for that. But do watch the first and second season and Ben's English, of course. I don't really have anything else in the pipe right now from uh, NHK World that I'd like to share. Or uh, no, I don't have anything in the pipe right now with NHK World that I have to, um, that's actually in production. So I unfortunately don't have anything there, but there are plenty of programs you can check on the NHK World app yes. on the on demand in Trails oh, yeah. of Oshii Tokyo. You can watch it anywhere. Wow. Yes, you can watch wasabi, you can watch Japanese rice, um you can watch cabbage. Oh, you can watch what else do we got eggplants. there? Eggplants. We talked a lot about eggplants earlier, I guess. Uh, yes, yeah, so go on the on demand and put in Kyle card and you can find many different things. And one documentary I really want everyone to see is called The Michinoku Trail of hope it's we did this whole like four part very expansive like documentary where we started in Aomori prefecture went all the way down to Fukushima just documenting all of the disaster that happened and all of course all of the hope that remains and what they're doing to recover from the tsunami disaster of like 2011 so that's a great documentary it's about 45 minutes long Michinoku Trail of Hope I really want you to check that out because that's one of my I feel life works so yeah, I feel really proud of it, and I feel it's a really important piece of information and uh, media for people to consume. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You heard it, folks. There's a lot of you to watch now. Mm -hmm. So, hey, yeah. it is, it's free. That any, anything in the NHK world is free. You can watch it any time. And if you have Amazon Prime, then you'll be able to also watch Benza as well. Um, where do people find you on the social McMedias? The social McMedias. You can find me on the Twitters at Kyle underscore card. You can find me on the Instagrams at the Bakairu, which is B-A-K-I-R-U. You can find me at the same at TikTok, which just started with Japanese content, and on the YouTubes at Bakairu Japan, where I talk about acting stuff. So yes, please check those out. Merci beaucoup, danke schön, and arigato gozaimasu. Hi. We're talking about acting stuff. Is it Japanese or English? It's English. Oh, fantastic. English. Wonderful, guys. There we go. I started it during COVID, did a couple of videos, then it dropped off. I recently started it up again. So Good. hold me to it. I'll keep putting out some videos to get more information out there for acting in Japan. Oh, there we go. fantastic. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's a good plug right mm -hmm. at the end of this one. Mm -hmm. Ladybeard, where can we find you? My name's Ladybeard. Oh, dear. <laughs> you can find me on the internet at, at Ladybeard underscore Japan. And don't forget my group Baby Beard at Baby Beard. At Baby Beard underscore Japan. You're just going to gash us. Cat the cat. <laughs> well, cat the cat under bar. No, underscore. Underscore. Oh, we say the wrong thing. Underscore Score. TV, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. You have it. Um, Ask Japanese. Tons of other channels. For example, since we were talking about the Gyaru who's done the test, there's a really old video of me dressing up as Gyaru, as said Gyaru, Ooh, famous Gyaru. Wow. Yeah, all of that. Ooh. I transformed in full-on Gyaru, and that's on Kawaii Patin, one of the many channels I am on. My name is Kathy Cat. It was a pleasure to be in the study with both of you. It's interesting how your Pleasure's handle is underscore TV when you're actually not on the TV at all. You're on the internet. I thought... In, my, in the way the channels that I put in mm. is like, that's my TV channel. That's my thing of keeping myself. Mm. I've, I wanted always to be an actress, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I well. thought, well, if you know, it's, that's why I act on my Twitch sometimes as different personas mm. and characters and such. So this is my own TV program that I can now make myself. Thanks to the internet. That's very good. So, Bless the internet. I'll link that up. But you can also check out this podcast on our YouTube channel. So if you're just listening to a wonderful voices, you're missing out on the great outfits. Oh, Kyle was so handsome. Look but at Kyle. Also, Kyle. seriously, the entire time you, I was really enjoying your acting. When you were telling stories, you were moving, you were acting as different characters already. I was just, that was a whole experience. So I can highly recommend you hop on over to the Cat with Beard from Japan 
Japan Podcasts YouTube channel to get the whole experience out of it. Oh, thank you. That was very kind of you to say. <clears throat> it was a real pleasure to have you here, Kyle. The I pleasure is all friend. mine, Cat and Beard. This is one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Thank you so much. Woo! Bless you. Why don't you take us out? Oh, gifts! Let's give each other oh, gifts! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna give each other gifts! <laughs> Good luck. Whenever you go somewhere in Japan, you you bring gifts. Uh, I brought gifts from Kyoto because oh, I was time. recently in Kyoto. These are fondant chocolat. Um, and they're like fondant chocolat, but instead of chocolat, they are with really, really strong matcha. Oh. It's my favorite. They are from a place called Mall Branch. Well, I also went to Kyoto Ooh. at the same time as you. Why yep. didn't we link we were up? We were both there, Gion Matsuri. Gion Matsuri. I watched Gion Matsuri from a rooftop. I watched it from the street level. I watched it from another street level behind a million people. But it was wonderful. Mm, it was and good. so is matcha flavored cookies. Woo! Cookies. Woo! All yes. right. Now we're looking at you. I, <laughs> went, I went to different countries. Wow. Firstly, I went to my country, Australia, and I brought back some Australian eucalyptus honey lozenges, mm. oh. which would be good for everyone's throats I after all this talking. Yeah, after all that country. talking, we'll need that. Yeah, 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 they're made from koala's blood, so that's good. <gasps> the flesh then, eating koalas. Yeah, <laughs> and then I also went to Singapore, oh. so I brought you some... Some freeze-dried durian, oh, no. sticky which fruit. will make you smelly. I've made some terrible experiences with durian, so really? this is giving me durian flashbacks. Well, what about koala's blood? Have you had bad experiences with that? I never tried that. Uh, you're no, about to sure have an experience with that. koala's yeah. blood. Cut. Should we do a taste test, or are we going out? What are we doing? Uh, I think we're... Nah, let's get nah, out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, okay, we're going to munch now on our snacks, but we'll see you soon for another episode of... Oh, God! God.